Hey guys and welcome back to my let's play of the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Last time we did Stormy Ascent. It's done. We don't have to go back there anymore. So it is now time to end Crash Bandicoot 1. We have the final boss in sight but first we have to go into the Great Hall. Very simple level. Return here when you earn when you earn every colored every clear gem. I've earned every clear gem, but it doesn't matter, so I'm gonna go over here. This is te technically this is really the, the, the way you should play it. You, you, even if you've collected all of the colored gems, go to the final boss first, then do uh, the Great Hall. It's a really weird ending structure, but th that. It, even though you're technically, you know, you, you can avoid the final boss. It's actually avoiding the final boss that's considered to really be the good ending. It's what causes the credits to roll. Well, I think credits roll regardless in the original. But, um, uh, in this version... Um, but it's the only way, in both versions, sorry, it's the only way you can actually get it to do a sort of where are they now thing at the end. So it's like they really do want you to go there first. Right. Now this final boss, I swear, it's so much harder in the remake. Like, I can clear this level, I can clear this boss no problem in the original. But these things, all of them, I'm surprised I avoided that purple one just then. Their hitboxes, I swear, are so much bigger in this version compared to the original. These purple ones are a particular problem. Uh, how did I just do that? I swear they're faster as well. And it, it's, it's a mixture of things. I, swear, I think they're faster. I'm not entirely sure on that. I think their hitboxes are a bit bigger. And they're just overall harder to see because they are also smaller. Whereas they're really easy to spot in the original. Like this. See, I, I didn't even touch that. I mean, I would have I would have landed on it regardless. So I don't really... I'm not really going to argue that. But I definitely didn't... I was definitely way above that when it actually killed me. Like, even the green ones are hard to hit. Yes, yeah, the green ones you want to hit, everything else will kill you. Red. See, yeah, and yeah, that didn't kill me. You want to hit the green ones, and you want to hit. Uh, you, you need to hit, build them up. So that thing will just randomly hover there for no reason. And that's how you build it. And that, and you got to hit enough of these green ones. I somehow missed that. I don't know how I missed that. And that's what you got to do. Simple concept that's made a lot harder in this remake for some reason. Right, there we go. So I'm going to do that plenty more times. So the final one, he just shoots the green ones. Again, Course X. You realize you could just not fire the green ones. I want to know how I'm capable of spinning back the green ones. <laughs> that makes no sense. How come I can spin back the green ones, but I can't spin back the rest of them? And they actually did bring it back. For Crash to Insanity, the um, the first battle, the way you defeat it is by knocking back the green projectiles. So they actually did bring this boss fight back for Twin Sanity. Oh dear! Uh, yeah, I was pretty much stuck there. I couldn't really do anything about that. <laughs> like, even if I didn't jump there, I would have had to have jumped over the next one, and then I would have hit the one after the green. Uh, yeah, I can clear this battle no problem in the original, but here it's just so much harder. I mean, it seems like a number of these boss battles were made harder in the original for some reason. I mean, Ripperoo, I don't know what was going on there. That definitely isn't the result of the uh, Insane Trilogy. That fight is actually pretty easy. I just failed spectacularly. Koala Kong is simple. You know, Papu Papu. Well, they made him. They gave him two extra hits. Or one or two extra hits, but that's all it did. Other than that, there was nothing different. And you can jump over him at any. You can jump onto him at any point. 
So, if anything, that just makes it easier, despite the additional health. What? I sp A, I was nowhere near that, and B, I spun. Alright, here we go. Final hit. Now, all he fires is the green one. Of course, I actually need to hit them. There we go. Final hit's really simple. But there we go. That's Crash Bandicoot 1. How did the castle catch on fire? What did we do? It was perfectly fine a moment ago. Where'd the storms go? It's weird how you climb the castle. There's a storm, then there isn't. Then there's a storm, then there isn't. And that's that. Alright, we'll just skip the credits. Alright, that just leaves us one last thing to do. But yeah, they really made that boss fight so much harder here. I don't know what I don't know what happened. Like they made that boss fight harder, they I say they made Embryo much harder. So I don't know what happened. But anyway, now we're gonna return to the Great Hall and we're actually gonna do the level proper. Even if it were, even if they're calling it a level, that's still stretching it. But now we can do this proper. Oh, it's movement <laughs> animation was a bit weird there. So let's jump on them, and that's it. Jump on all. So there's a total of twenty of these. Twenty clear gems, six colored gems. Technically now twenty-one, but Stormy Ascent isn't here. Oh, and that's the Z axis messing me up. It is surprisingly tr it is quite easy to fall off of these, I find, because you know they're not very big. You know, regardless of which version you're playing, they're not very big platforms. I wonder what Cortex is planning on doing with Tor now, because he's got pictures of her. By the way, I love Crash's face in this cutscene. They added a cutscene for this. There's no cutscene here in the original, but I love what they added here. Just go with his face. Taku sold the ruins of Castle Cortex to a resort developer. He then used the proceeds to open a big and tall shop on the island. So what happened to Crash to Insanity then? <laughs> Back to a tribesman in that. After intense therapy and eight years of higher education, Dr. Ru went on to write the well-received book, Through the Eye of the Vortex, a study of rapid evolution and its consequences. Koala Kong moved to Hollywood and landed a motion picture deal of universal proportions. Currently, he is working on a speech therapist to improve, to improve his diction. Pinstripe moves to Chicago, where he now owns and operates a citywide sanitation company. He is saving money for his upcoming gubernatorial something. After the disappearance of his mentor, Dr. Nitrous Brio rediscovered his first love, tending bar. Except, uh, some of these are canon, some of them aren't, it seems. The world has heard nothing of Cortex since Crash foiled his plans, but evil geniuses are harder to squash than cockroaches. We haven't even defeated him, we, we, we ignored him technically. And yeah, if this was the original, the credits would then roll. Yeah, it's a really weird ending structure. But that's the only way you can view all of that. Not that it means anything. And yet all the dumps us for Pinstripe! Yeah, where did the blimp go, by the way? In that ending, there was no blimp. And how come we can now land on that bird and be perfectly fine? But anyway, so that's it for Crash Bandicoot 1. There we are. For 103%. The 27 out of 26 gems, thanks to Stormy Ascent. But that's it. Screw you two.
All I can say is, is that while this is the best version of Crash 1, it's still Crash 1 with many of its problems. Though, one of the, though obviously the main issue that isn't here anymore is the fact that you can die in the stages. Of course they still added that for the colour gems, but you know I find with that it's just a way of paying homage, so I have no issue with them using it there. Even if it is in some of the most annoying stages in the game. Unfortunately, because of the changes in collision detection and hitboxes, some stages are made much more difficult than others. I only really found it to be a problem in Crash 1 though. I don't find it really impacted Crash 2 in any way. That's how you get back on hit. I didn't find it really impacted Crash 2 or 3 in any way. But it was an issue in Crash 1. So while this is the best version of Crash 1, you're, I'd, it's still Crash 1. You know, although I'll play this over Crash 3, I still say Crash 2 is the best one. Well, I'd well, say Wrath of Cortex is the best one, but of, of the original trilogy, Crash 2 I'd still say is better than this. But you know, th this, this one is still fine. The original has aged a bit in certain areas, and in some cases so has th this still applies here, though not as badly. But Crash 1 is still a good time. But anyway, that concludes Crash 1, but we've still got two more games left to go. So I will see you guys next time with the Insane Trilogy remaster of Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. And I love how during this animation, uh, Crash's uh, arm is clipping through the rock. And I just realized there is actually one more thing left that I just need to show off. Well, two more. One is the fact that Coco, if you come into this level as Coco, she actually does have a starting animation as well. That's like how we have Crash get up off the beach. Coco just gets up, somehow pulls the laptop out of her pocket. Alright, and there's just one last thing left to do here. So we just need to make our way far enough into the level. So when you complete the game, you will unlock the cameos of Fate Crash. Now, Fate Crash is based off of a Japanese plushie of uh, Crash. There he is. And he initially appeared in Crash... Uh, he initially appeared in Crash 3. I, I think he was only in one level. He was in one of the jet ski levels. I don't remember what it is you need to do to make him appear. I can't remember if it was just complete the game, get all the gems, get all the relics. Get, I don't think it was get all the gold relics. I don't remember exactly what you need to do to make him appear. But he appears in one level when he does his own version of the Crash Dance. Um, but he makes a cameo in I think every single level in the entire trilogy. So, uh, But we can do it here. Coco's taking photos of the inside of that rock because it's clearly clipping right through it. Is it going to explode or is it going to be fine? I think it's when she starts taking selfies that it starts to explode. They certainly modernized her and that insect is losing its mind. I'm wondering, what am I looking at? What's it dancing for? <laughs> it's actually like an endless animation. I want to see if it explodes. Give me their Samsung Galaxy Note 7. No, I think it's just going to repeat this animation. Oh, well. Alright, well, as I was saying... I will see you guys next time with Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back. And I will see you guys then.